my name is Alyssa Nigel, and I am making a video to get some feedback for my main stage talk at NGConf 2017. The title of my talk is Giving Bootstrap the Boot. I know um, with this year especially they're being super conscious about not being negative. I mean the entire title of my talk, right, Giving Bootstrap the Boot, as witty as it is, it is negative. And I do want to talk about how I could possibly approach the subject of convincing people that Bootstrap isn't the optimal thing you want to use while at the same time not being negative about it. If, if we get real honest, there is no positive way to say stop using that. I'm not really sure what to do with it. I'm just going to do my absolute best and hopefully that people won't like throw things at me while I'm on stage. So I have been a full-time developer for a year now and I work um, as my day job and I have a ton of side projects. So through all of these, there's been a common theme and a common pain point of bootstrap. Um, and if you haven't actually experienced the pain of bootstrap, I can't give that to you. I can't fully make you understand, but I'm gonna do my best to paint a picture of the pains of bootstrap. So the second selector is just to override the wonderful bootstrap. So this select right here. There are a lot of times that because bootstrap is so specific that you have to one up it in specificity and this isn't the reusable way to do CSS, right? This is very painful and very specific and it's gonna be a pain to then go and iterate on and change in the future. Um, and so it's just kind of like adding on more and more complexity and more and more specificity as you go uh, throughout the lifetime of your project. Uh, super important specific selectors. I'm scrolling through and I'm probably gonna be making a face on stage like this. And then I'm gonna like check my watch. Right? And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is taking forever, right? And we zoom in and we see that all of these important tags that we were just scrolling through is actually bootstrap. By default, 66 important tags. They're being as specific as they possibly can by default 66 times. I pulled up this like Stack Overflow article. Hey, here's a guy who's wondering how to like make specificity work. He's using Bootstrap and he's trying to overwrite it. It's not working. And of course the number one voted thing on there, the number one answer was, have you tried adding important to all of the lines? At the end of the day, people get frustrated and this is their only answer. I'm ending with a quote from the Stack Overflow guy, typically not the best way to do this, but I think it should work. And that really sums up the story of living with Bootstrap and trying to work alongside Bootstrap, right? Like it's it's not the best way to do it. It's not gonna be future like scalable and thinking about everything and how you want your library to work. And it's not gonna be really understandable for future team members who jump on, but it should work, right? Sure, we can import in all the things. Hello. So I feel like I owe it to Bootstrap to be able to say face to face that when it first came out, it did have its uses. But this idea, this attitude of typically, you know, this isn't the best way to do this, but it should work. We can do better, right? We, we can do better than it should work. This should get us through. So what does that look like? Well, I have two options for you to offer up today. The first is to completely remove Bootstrap. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I actually, with NG Doc, um, I got pulled on. Joe Eames was like, hey, I hear you're giving a talk about removing Bootstrap. I have an app that needs Bootstrap removed. And I was like, I'm your gal. So I did remove Bootstrap from that project, but many of you might be thinking, I work on a really big app. It's been in production for years. There's not time, money, resources, permission, autonomy to actually remove Bootstrap. So to those of you, probably the majority, I offer option number two. <laughs> Completely remove Bootstrap nicely. What does that mean? One component at a time. So think to yourself, the next time you need to refactor something, the next time that you get tasked with a new feature, challenge yourself to do that one component, that one feature, sans Bootstrap, right? Don't use their selectors. Get out that custom style. I know this can be scary. I've been told this can be scary even though you all are brilliant developers, right? And, and like making the button look good is scary. But, but I want to give you something to hold on to because I do styling all the time. 
And I still, to this day, look things up, right? We're not computers that can memorize everything. So if you want to challenge yourself, you want to remove Bootstrap and give it the boot, um, CSS Tricks by Chris Coyer. Anybody heard of Chris Coyer, CSS Tricks? Anybody? Yeah, we got some people in the audience. I know, right? Amazing, absolute best. He's got an almanac. He's got tons of articles and how-tos. And best of all, most of them end with a code pin with like the actual code, so you can be like, ooh, right? So here's a resource that you can hold on to. But typically, it's not the best way to do this, but I think it should work. This bootstrappy attitude, it just can't, it can't remain. We can't allow it to continue. And I love what hard-boiled web design had to say about it. The worst that we, as the current custodians of the web, can do is to allow anything to limit what's possible. And that's what bulky libraries, like Bootstrap, there are others, they do. They're themed, they cut out all the creativity, all of the art, like artistry, right? You just plug it and chug it, you keep going. So I wanna challenge you all to give Bootstrap the boot, even if it's just one component, because there is nothing to fear and everything to gain by writing your own styles from scratch. Thank you all so much for having me.